Okay, welcome you all to a new lesson, and this is going to be now a lesson to understand a little bit more the perspectives of human growth and development. And the thing that we're going to focus on is going to be on a lesson based on transient exuberance. To go straight out to the point, to understand the main, main lesson, what you see here is my attempt of a draw of a neuron. The neuron overall looks like that, that's the shape of the neuron. It is the most basic building cell that we have on the brain. The neuron has two main functions. One is to give um, the shape that we have to a brain. The cortex, the internal organs, everything is made up of neurons. But the most important thing about neurons is that neurons allow communication within everything in our brain. So, think of our body like a vehicle, like a car. We can have all the parts there, we can have our muscles, we can have our skin, we can have our bones, everything could be there. But if we don't have a brain, none of that works. So think of a car with everything in it but no engine, it wouldn't run. So the engine is the brain, it's what allows everything to move. The fact that I'm moving my hands, the fact that I'm communicating, the fact that I'm seeing, everything is ruled by my brain and everything is coming straight out from the neurons. So. Within the neuron, it's important to know some of the most basic parts that make a neuron. If we see that the whole thing is a neuron, then within the body, which is called the soma, we have branches that extend, and those are called dendrites. Dendrites mainly receive information. Then if we have the long tail over here, this is called the axon, and the axon is the one that sends information out. So, how does this relate to transient exuberance? Let's go straight out to the topic. Look, the thing is, before we had research and before we understood human growth from a scientific perspective, we only had evidence based on our theories, observations, and the thought, the prevalent thought is that in the first couple of years of life, there was nothing going on over here. There's growth, but you're a baby, you're, somebody's taking care of you, you're an infant. And there's nothing that is really happening in those first years of life. Well, until we began to study this scientifically, we began to re realize that this was a big mistake. In the first two years of life, and this is wonderful to think of, the kind of growth that we have in two years is massive. At the time that I'm recording this video, I'm 32 years old. 32. If you compare how I look now compared to how I looked two years ago, there's some minor changes. I may have gained a couple pounds. Not a big deal, but you see a newborn and you see that newborn two years after and it's huge, massive growth. Not only is it physically, but it's also mentally. So just to give out a perspective, picture this. By two years of age, in terms of your overall height, it's not odd or it's not unusual for a human to reach about half of its adult size by two years of age. By two years, you reach about half of your height. That's how, that's, that's how fascinating the process of growth is within the first couple of years of life. But in the brain, it's even more. So by two years of age, on average, the brain reaches about 75% of its full growth. This helps us to understand a couple things. First, 75% within the first two years of life, and if your height is about a half, first thing is by two years of age, you know how kids don't have a symmetrical body. It is not unusual to see a two-year-old, you know, they have those huge heads, right? And because of the center of gravity being in their head, they tend to be kind of clumsy, they fall often, they trip. It's normal. But what is making the brain grow so much? How does it attain 75% of its adult size in two years? Well, let's think theoretically about this. Now pay attention because this is the main lesson in this video. Theoretically, think about it this way. All the dots that you see here, they're all neurons. Think of each dot as a neuron. By the time that you're born, you pretty much have already made all the neurons that you will make through your life. You have them already. Why is the brain growing up so much though? What makes the brain grow so much in two years is not that you're making new neurons, but is that the neurons that you already make, that you already make, establish connections. So let's think about it this way. 
What kind of things did you learn by two years of age? What kind of things? Simple words, like differentiating who's your mom, who's your dad. And when you do that, picture every neuron connecting with other neurons. You start to learn how to walk. Boom, it's connections that you're making across all the neurons. You learn that you can touch things, you learn that you cannot touch some things. So, you know, a lot of connections going over there. You may start to acknowledge basic things, like say you want a cookie, maybe you cannot reach for the cookie yard, but you can point at it and you can say cookie. Things like that build connections, build connections. So, by the first two years of your life, you have something wonderful that you will never have in your life again. By the first two years of life, you have your brain at maximum potential. All the neurons are available for you to make connections, and it's a wonderful process called transient exuberance. Everything that you see here is transient exuberance. And exuberance implies that it's massive, that it's exponential, that it's growing fast. Transient, though, implies that it's just momentarily. So how long does this process last? About two years. The, the mind of, of a kid is a sponge at this time, so they attain information right away, attain a lot of information right away. But the thing is, this is a time limit. And this is also called a critical period because if you're going to learn something, you're going to learn something here. It has to be learned here. For example, language. If you're ever going to learn language as a human being, you need to be exposed to language within the first couple of years of your life. And we know this because of isolated case studies of humans that have been raised in an environment where they don't have contact with any other humans. And even though they have all the capabilities to talk, speak, communicate, they are never able to because the brain already closed out on that potential. The critical period is done. So this can happen for only about two years of life. What is growing? The connections. Those are your dendrites that are connecting. What happens afterwards? At approximately two years, all that process boom, stops. And you make some connections. Then what follows is called pruning. Pruning is when you start to cut off the unused neurons. So, all those neurons that you failed to make connections are gone. And this will now become very important. This will now become the foundation for your thought. The connections that you made in the first couple years of your life will become the foundation and everything that you will learn in your life afterwards builds on top of those connections. That is a wonderful process of transcendent exuberance. So, practical applications, why is this useful to know? Before we have research on this from a scientific perspective, we thought that the first two years were just time wasted. But it's not. It's time actually very well spent. The first two years of your life will establish a foundation so make use of it. If you have a kid within that infancy stage, make sure that you provide enough exposure to elements to bring more and more and more connections. And of course, this is appropriate. This doesn't mean that if you have a three-month-old, you're going to sit a three-month-old and start to teach mathematics. No, you're not going to do that. The thing is that you want to expose, expose, expose. So take them out to see different things. Take them out to smell a lot of things. You know what is really cool? When you have a baby and you take a baby, say for example, to a mall when it's like Christmas and you see the lights everywhere and you see the sounds and you see the music, notice the face of a kid who is feeling wondered by all of those things. There's a lot of connection going on in the brain. That is very beneficial. Isn't that a time to just sit and poop and cry? This is a time of wonderful connection that will aid a lot of person through the rest of the adult years. So, for all of us to wrap it up, think of, for example, think of, you know, not only language, not only in how many languages do you speak, because the difference on how much you speak a language depends on how much you were exposed to it. 
If, for example, you live in an environment like I'm recording this in El Paso, which is in the border town, we have a lot of English and Spanish around. And if you were exposed to separately English and separately Spanish, you may be able to dominate both. Depends a lot on the age in which you were exposed. If you were exposed to that second language as a kid, you're going to grasp it like that. If you were exposed to that second language as an adult, you're going to grasp it, but you'll never have the same intuitive kind of learning process that a kid has. And if on the other hand, you learn both, which is very common here, both languages as one, like connected, then what do you have? You have Spanglish. And it can be very hard for you to separate those two languages because you pretty much learn them both as one in your brain. Think about accents. The accent that you have when you speak is also encoded in your brain and it can be very hard for you to speak in a different accent because it's already made connections in your brain. Now, a couple last things. I always like two things. I like music, I like food. I like a lot of those two things. It's very interesting to me that when I think of music, you grew up in an environment where you listen to a specific type of music, the one that your caregivers listen to. And it's funny because when you grow older, you may like a lot of different types of music, but something happens deep in your brain that when you listen to that music that you grew up listening to, it just calls in a different way. That may end up being the music that you start to listen to when you're getting drunk. That may be the music that you start to listen to when you miss home. That's the music that you start to listen to when you miss a family member. But there's something about that music that just calls you. And that is because within your brain you have established connections that is telling you this is a foundation, this is home. One more, food. I love food. It's very interesting that with food, everybody grew up eating a specific type of, of food. And we establish that as normality. When you grow older, you may try a lot of different types of food, but there's nothing that would call your sense of taste as the food that you grew up eating. That's because in your brain, your sense of taste established foundations saying this is what you would know as normal. It may not be the best type of food. It may not be your favorite type of food, but there's something about it that just calls you home when you eat it. And this is for two years. By two to six years of age, it's a brief, brief introduction to what will come next. We have still what is called a sensitive period because the brain now grows by six years of age to about 90% of its adult size. And the thing is, a few connections that you made now will become sharper, will become stronger. And this is something that you will learn later on. This happens because the accent is going to get it's going to get sharper and it's going to get thicker because a new a new a new coat will take over it and will make it run faster. That's called a myelin sheath and this process is called myelination and it would make the brain grow so much from 2 to 4 years of age. By six years of age, that process stops. And you can say that your brain is at 90% of its adult size by six years of age. How long would it take to get to that 100%? Typically, most of us reach that 100% by our mid-20s. So if it took six years to grow to 90%, it's going to take about 19 to 20 years to grow that other 10%. The rate of growth is far, far slower. Isn't it wonderful? Alright, this is the lesson on transient exuberance. Hope you liked it. Thank you so much. Well done.